Hello, hello, beautiful people, Instagram, and those of you on YouTube. Hi, I am Tanika Maria. Welcome to my page. Thank you for being here. For those of you who may join, those of you who will catch the replay, I am the coach for high achieving women, women of faith who are very intentional and serious about getting real, being healed, and not just simply bouncing back, but moving forward forward after trauma, moving forward after loss, moving forward after a relationship breakup. And as you know, I'm on the journey to 55 and I am just excited to be out here with you. And I wanted to share really quickly four big obstacles that interfere with the healing process of moving forward with a breakup. And if you find yourself in that place or you may not, you may think you're healed and you're really not healed. This is what happens to us a lot, a lot because just because you've moved on physically in time does not mean your heart has moved on. And we think we're healed and we're not. And so let's dive in. And, th and if you're not following me, definitely follow me. Catch the notifications for when I go live and be sure to catch the replay. So really quickly, let's talk about the four biggest obstacles that we run into when it comes to healing, really, really and truly healing and moving on from some someone or some situation that really, really hurts your heart. The first distraction. The first thing is distraction. We run from ourselves we are so good and so quick to do everything in the world but really really feel our feelings and we're those of us that are christian we're so quick to put christian mayonnaise over it and just over spiritualize it and say okay i'm supposed to forgive them but no mm -mm. you have to feel your feelings and you have to actually not distract yourself by being busy, over spiritualizing it, stuffing it, repressing it. You know, we keep going outside of ourselves for that validation, for that attention. Um, we, we, we try to, I, I, I could describe it as like, it's like the, the, the underlying emotions are still there, but we kind of ride over the top of it. And so like what's really going on in us, the pain is kind of floating down there in our subconscious is sort of a shadowy sadness, a, a shadowy anxiousness, a shadowy sense of uh, regret, that shadowy sense of like there's this, this sludge there, there's an ickiness there, there's a pain there, but we just keep on being busy. We just keep on perpetrating. We just keep on faking and we scroll on social media. We imbibe a lot of content. We're reading stuff. We're being really busy. And so we're, we're staying busy. I call it busy and dizzy, right? We're, uh, we're distracting ourselves from really feeling our pain. And so we don't really want to sit and be alone for a season and really allow that stuff to rise to the, to the surface. We distract ourselves with social media. We, we distract ourselves with our family. We distract ourselves with our businesses. If you're a high achieving woman and you're out here, you're a go getter and you're a hustler and you're making things happen, it's really, really easy for you to hide out. It's really easy for you to hide out under, I'm making my coin, I'm getting my hustle. I'm doing my business and you hurt, you're hurting. And so it's very easy. We can go pick up another project. We can get another big um, assignment, something that we concocted to do and we're keeping ourselves busy. And there's a benefit to being active and engaged while you're healing, like doing some things and kind of keeping yourself occupied, but you, you don't want to go overboard. And what we do, we take it to the next level. We never really sit with our feelings. And so what happens, we'll move on. We we'll move on in time. We'll move on physically, but our heart is still in the same place that it was at the time of that breakup. Our heart, instead of healing right, the heart heals back a little cricket. It's like, it's like, it's like, if you broke your leg, right? If you broke your leg, you would have sense enough to go to the emergency room and go to the orthopedic doctor and let them set that leg in a cast so that that leg will heal back straight and you won't be any pain and, and walking on it funny. But when our heart has been bruised, when our heart has been broken, when our heart has been damaged, and I'm talking about my women of faith here, when your heart has been damaged and when it has been bruised, just like as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. 
You you if if you don't let that heart grow back healthy and strong, that heart is going to go back grow back crooked too. Right? We we won't walk around on a jacked up leg like I'm just going to let or oh, time heals all wounds. Let time heal it. No, you're going to go to the emergency room. You're going to stay off of that leg. You're going to go to the doctor and let that doctor set that leg. You're going to sit down and have several seats. Amen. But what do we do with our hearts? Oh, time heals all. No, it don't. <laughs> so the key, the, the first key, the first thing that we do, what, that's a, the, a big obstacle to your healing process. And I'm talking to my high achieving women of faith. Those that are out here, we're making our coins, we're hurting and we're busting and we're not healing. It's distracting ourselves. And if you're busy and you got a business or a ministry, it's very, very easy. To perpetrate and pretend you're healed when you're not because I can distract myself and so my heart is gonna grow back a little bit more hard my heart becomes a little more hard my heart is a little more cricket my heart is coming in a little bit more dysfunctional thank you guys for coming in blessings to you all thank you for being here and so and that wound is still there so yes I've moved on in time I've moved on physically but my heart is a little bit more dysfunctional now my heart is a little bit more twisted my heart is a little bit more crooked. My heart is a little bit more hardened. Why? Because I didn't take the time to get real mm -hmm. and be healed. And so how, does, how do we know? Because you get into another dynamic. You'll get into another relational dynamic. Not necessarily romantic. It could be business. It could be on your job. It could be friendships. And guess what? You get triggered. Mm. And this is how it shows up. Number two, the second way the second obstacle to your healing process is, of course, big old unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. This is about settling that, uh, that emotional debt. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Settling the emotional debt with that ex for once and for all. The Bible says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And so when someone has hurt you, that's like a debt in the spirit, right? It's a dead in the spirit. And we're constantly trying to get that other person. It's subconscious. It's a subconscious. It's a spirit debt. And so we're subconsciously trying to collect the debt by, you know, we're, we're, we're holding that little resentment in our hearts. We're nursing it. We're ruminating over it. The spirit of replay, rumination, regret, it's all up in there. And we holding this little nasty grudge. And you're the one that's got to live with you. You're, you're the one. I'm the one that's got to live in this heart. Right? And so at some point, you're going to have to settle that emotional debt with that ex. And what do I mean by that? That ex that hurt you, that wounded you, whoever it is, this may not even be for a breakup. If I'm speaking to you, right? That ex does not have the capacity to pay you back. Only God can heal that hurt. You make a conscientious decision by an act of your will and your feelings catch up later, but you begin the process of letting that debt go. So let's break it down really plain. We're, it's like you're trying to collect a million dollar debt for some, from somebody that only has one dollar. That's what it looks like. That's the best description I can give you of how unforgiveness looks. You're trying to collect a million dollar spiritual debt from somebody that only has one dollar. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. So again, the second obstacle from healing from a breakup that prohibits us from really healing is holding on to that emotional debt, trying to collect it from somebody that has no power at all whatsoever to pay that debt back, right? Now, the third debt. I'm sorry. Y'all got me thinking about debts and my phone has gotten dim. I don't know what's going on with that. It seems to be dim here. But at any rate, the third obstacle that holds us back is lack of vision for the future. Another th obstacle that holds you back from really healing from that breakup is being stuck in the past and what happened and regret and what you should have, could have said when things went down and always like rehashing the last few conversations, rehashing and going over in your mind the, the last few weeks and what went down and, and kind of being stuck Well, I should have done this. And, you know, so at some point you have to have healing and deliverance of those 
regrets and those memories of what happened and those emotions. And again, that spirit of replay, that spirit of rehashing, that spirit of rumination, and it gets you stuck. It's deadly. It's soul killing all of that regret. And at some point you have to get, give yourself permission to live again. You've been forgiven. If you've gone to God, ask for forgiveness. You've done the best you could. You've processed, you've sat with it. You see yourself, you've learned your lessons. Now you just got to let it go. At some point you have to give yourself permission to live again. And so you have to be, begin to trust the process of life again and get to the point of having hope. Because if you stay stuck that you won't have vision for the future. You can't be out here talking about, okay, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I'm getting my hustle on. I'm making my coin. I'm about kingdom business. But you're, you have no vision and you have no hope because you're still stuck in rumination and regret about what happened in that relationship. That's going to steal whatever hope and vision you got for your business. It's going to be sucked away by that regret. It's, it holds you back. It's like drag. It's like drag and resistance in the spirit realm where you're stuck in regret. It's holding you back from that God-ordained vision. It's holding you back from that God-ordained assignment. And I love what Dr. Faith Wokoma, she's my pastor at Legacy Center Church. I love this quote from her. She says, when we don't heal our past, we abuse our present. When we don't heal our past, we abuse our present. And so that's the third obstacle when it comes to healing from a breakup. The third obstacle that can, can really prohibit you from healing as you should. And finally, and I'm going to see what's going on with my little dark. So sorry about that. <laughs> Excuse this video for you guys who may watch it on the replay. The fourth obstacle is not coming to a place of acceptance. Not really and truly coming to a place of acceptance. And this means really accepting who you are, who, how you showed up in that relationship, and the person that you're becoming right now. This means admit it. Okay, yes, God, I overlooked the red flags. Yes, God, this is how I showed up. Yes, God, I did this. And yes, I did that. And really, at the end of the day, you didn't go into that relationship. You didn't go into that situation just like, you know, intending for it to fail and go wrong. You went into it because you wanted to love and to be loved, right? You gave it time. You, you, you know, God, I, I saw the potential. I wanted it to be a certain way. Yes, God, I placed myself in this situation. And yes, God, it caused me pain. And God, I wanted to extend grace. I wanted to show love. I wanted to do the right thing, but it still messed up on me. Instead of thinking of all the different things you did wrong and everything that they did wrong at some point, and, and then see, when you do that, you begin to internalize the regret and the shame. You start internalizing it, right? And not everything was your fault. Come on, you can't take the whole blame for everything. At some point, you got to like accept it. That's what it was. That's how I showed up. That's how they showed up. And this is what it is. And God, I just receive your forgiveness. I accept who I am now. I accept who I was then. And I accept who I am becoming. And you got to realize this and come to this conclusion, okay? I'm not some super toxic, bad, evil person just because I got hurt in the relationship. I'm not super toxic, bad, and evil just because I made a mistake. At some point, you have to come to that place of acceptance. So I hope this blessed you. I hope this encouraged you. And I really want you to think, you know, are you in any of these obstacles? Where are you? Are you stuck in any of these places? Right? Really sit down and really think through this. Don't just simply scroll and, and listen to the video, but sit with yourself, sit with God and like, you know, God, where am I in this process? Am I really as healed as I think I am? And that is the key to getting real, being healed and moving forward. I'm Tanika Maria, all about helping you get real, be healed, move on in emotional wholeness, peace and clarity for my high achieving women of faith, for that woman of high value who really wants that extra push to not just simply bounce back, but to bounce forward in emotional wholeness, peace, clarity, and mastery. And you have to be healed to master your emotions, especially if you are someone who intends to do great things and have an assignment on your life. Definitely click the link in my bio. Stay tuned and connected. You can grab a copy of my book, Get Out of That Dead End Relationship Now. Also, you can click the link in my bio to download the five unconscious blocks to love that may be holding you back 
as you continue to heal. So definitely check that out. I'm Tanika Maria, and I'll be back out here again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.